Hare Krishna, dear devotees, thank you very much for being with us once again in these weekly videos about the Gita for Everyone program. Today we will analyze chapter 13. This is the first chapter of the last section of the Bhagavad Gita. Chapter 13 until chapter 18 are the uh, last part in which Krishna is consolidating what he has explained in the first and second section. Um, we may say that in the beginning, the first section, chapters 1 to 6, everything that we needed to know to achieve perfection was given. Um, the way of understanding ourselves, our identity, our duty, our knowledge. In chapter 4, in chapter 5, the result, chapter 6, our way of thinking, the meditation that we need to have, the highest form of meditation. In chapter 7 to 12, Krishna explains about himself, his supremacy, who is the boss. Now we had all the explanations of all these uh, 12 chapters, and now in chapter 13 we change gears, we change the modality that Krishna is, uh, in which Krishna is presenting the knowledge of the Gita. We're going to use an analogy for us to understand what is the context in which these chapters are presented. And the context is, that the person who had just signed up and accepted the, the job offer that Krishna has given is in prison. For whatever reason, we're not going to go into the details, but the person ends up in prison. So this is the issue that we have at hand, and this is the um, problem that will be addressed in these um, six chapters. The analogy that we use in the first one is amnesia. In the first six chapters, Krishna addressed the problem of, of us forgetting who we are, what we need to do, what we need to understand, etc. In the middle section, the analogy was a job interview, a job offer, formally presented to Arjuna. But we have a problem now. We all are in prison. And we go to the title of the chapter. This chapter is called Nature Enjoyed in Consciousness, one of the longest chapters or titles in the Bhagavad Gita. What does it mean? So for us to remember and understand easily this chapter, we have to just focus on one word from the, from the title. Nature. Nature enjoyed in consciousness. Nature. What sort of nature are we talking about here? Nature actually is the prison house. It's called material nature. That's what Krishna will address in this particular chapter. Now, one word, remember we had the, the, the technique of remembering one, one word. The word that we're going to use in this context, in this analogy, is uh, paramatma. Now, sometimes these Sanskrit words, for those of us who are not so familiar with Sanskrit, it may be a little um, difficult to remember, because we don't associate them with something that we can relate with. Paramatma actually has a, a very important function for the living entity. And, and I'll try to put it in context so we can understand and we can remember. The fact is that we got the job. We signed the, the, the contract. We got our job description. Remember chapters 10, 11, 12? But we are in prison. We are uh, sent to jail in, in, in the prison house. So our boss, Krishna, takes a very uh, magnanimous attitude. And then he says, I will go with you to jail. Uh, imagine if, if, if you are offered a job and you get the job, you sign the contract. And by some reason, you end up on Monday in jail. And, and your boss calls you up and he says, you know, I'm a lawyer. And I will pro bono, meaning for free, help you out until you are out, until you are free. So, paramatma, and maybe a simpler word for us to remember, it's the lawyer. We call paramatma as the Lord in the heart. In this particular case, in this chapter 13, it's a word that we are giving you, so you won't forget uh, uh, this chapter ever again in your life. You remember always the lawyer in your heart. Paramatma has the function, he takes on that function, that he's the overseer, meaning he's your protector, he's your advocate, he's the permitter, 
So according to his um, design, we can obtain freedom from this prison situation. So that's the beginning, chapter 13, called Nature, Enjoy, and Conscious. And we'll explain a little bit about the different words that are used in the title. But just for us to make it simple, nature. Nature refers to material nature or the prison house. The topic is the description of Paramatma, Krishna in our heart. He takes the place of an advocate, of a lawyer, of a protector, and he stays with us, doesn't matter what condition of life, 24-7 for free. How does this chapter begin? Arjuna here, typically he presents a very nice question. He asks six things in the first verse of this chapter. He asks about the nature, he asks about the enjoyer, he asks about the feel or the body, the knower of the feel, he asks about the definition of knowledge and also what's the object, what's the purpose of obtaining knowledge. So these are the six questions that Arjuna presents in the first text of this chapter. There are 35 verses, it is relatively a small, um, small chapter, as I said earlier uh, in other videos. Any chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, except 2 and 18, takes us less than 10 minutes to read them all, only the verses. And how the chapter ends, Krishna once again he is emphasizing the value, the importance of devotional service. And he says, basically, in the last verse, in text number 35, if you know the difference between the body and the soul, and you understand the process of liberation, then you can achieve the supreme goal, freedom. So that's the basic structure of the, of the chapter. The topic is Krishna and his uh, kindness, being with us in prison, in the form of Paramatma. The different sections, there is a long explanation about Paramatma, the vision of the person who can obtain freedom. Also, the answers uh, that uh, Arjuna is looking for uh, are explained very carefully by Krishna. What's the connection with the previous verse? Sorry, with the previous chapter, chapter 12. In chapter 12, text 7, Krishna says, I, will, I am the swift deliverer. Right? He uses that word. Teshaham samudartha in Sanskrit. So here in this chapter, Krishna will explain how is that he delivers his devotee. It's not just a, a, a blank statement or something that he says casually. Here, Prabhupada often says, Krishna consciousness is a science. So here, he, it will be explained how is it that a devotee a jiva that takes up devotional service can be free from this prison house or called material nature. So that's the connection. With the previous chapter, the connection with the next chapter, um, chapter 14, called the modes of material nature. Here, Krishna twice refers to the modes of nature. So he's explaining, he's giving the, the, the detail information, what a jiva, a living entity, a spirit soul, needs to get out of the material prison. So when he refers to that, as generally Krishna does, he refers to something briefly, and then in, in the future chapter or section of the Gita, he will explain in a more elaborate way. So the connection with the next chapter is that in the next chapter, what he has uh, briefly mentioned, he will elaborate completely in chapter 14. And in the personal sense, we can see that um, this chapter helps us to understand Krishna's uh, kindness and mercy on us by being with us. Doesn't matter what we do, what we choose to do, He always is there with us in our heart. So that's the basic structure, that's the content and the connection. Questions by Arjuna in text number one. Basically, the whole chapter is answers to Krishna's, uh, sorry, to Arjuna's six questions in, in this text. The analogies, there are two analogies. One is that the soul, just like the sky, is not um, uh, mixed with anything. It doesn't, the sky doesn't mean, uh, mix with anything due to its subtle nature. In the same way, the soul doesn't mix with the body. The other analogy that Krishna uses towards the end of the chapter is that just like the, the sun illuminates the entire universe, in the same way, the, the soul with a spiritual vision enlightens the whole body. So we hope that this is helpful for you. We have tried to summarize 
quite a philosophical chapter. We hope that you utilize these uh, words and these concepts to remember, to understand, and also to share Bhagavad Gita with others. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.